Have you ever wanted to beat your friends at Six String Trivial Pursuit? I know I have, and I'm not even sure that game exists. Today, we're looking at seven fun facts about famous guitarists, which I hope one day you can use on board game night. The nickname Slow Hand seems like an odd moniker for the great Eric Clapton. As one of the pioneers who fused blues and rock, Clapton has been regarded as a true guitar god since the 60s. So it makes sense that the name Slow Hand is not a reference to his musical abilities. Instead, it can be traced back to a technical instrument problem. When playing with the Yardbirds, Clapton would use especially thin strings, enabling him to bend with ease. Of course, the downside to this is that a string is more likely to break. While Clapton would restring his axe, it became a regular occurrence that the crowd would break into a slow clap. This odd tradition inspired the nickname that has since stayed with him. It's safe to say that John Frusciante is a bit of an odd guy, and so was Frank Zappa. It would have been fascinating to hear their eccentricities and brilliance working together in a musical setting. It could have happened too. Growing up, John was a massive fan of Frank. During his formative years, he would scour LA looking for every one of Zappa's albums. According to John, he believed this music instilled in his brain the wide open, infinite possibilities of creating shapes with music. So when Frank Zappa was holding open auditions for a guitar slot, John found himself standing in line. However, before the audition, he opted out. The story goes that while waiting for his turn, John realized he wanted to be a rock star who got girls and did drugs. This could never happen in Frank's band, which had a strict no drug policy. The group that he would eventually join, the Red Hot Chili Peppers, were a little bit more lenient. The song Your Body's a Wonderland took singer, songwriter, guitarist, and Snapchatter extraordinaire John Mayer's music across the globe. Years later, John's music would transcend our earthly confines and make its way into outer space. Since the Apollo program, NASA has had a tradition of sending music as a morning wake-up call to their astronauts. On August 11, 2007, John Mayer's song Gravity was used as the alarm clock on the space shuttle Endeavor. There's no doubt now that John Mayer's music is out of this world. This next topic has some disputed facts, but one thing is for sure, Jimi Hendrix and Tommy Chong have a hidden history history of making music together. In 1962, a young Hendrix went to live with his grandma in Vancouver up here in Canada. While there, he frequented a club where the band Bobby Taylor and the Vancouverites would often play. Tommy Chong, who would later go on to star in the stoner comedy duo Cheech and Chong, was playing guitar in the band. Here's where the discrepancy comes in. Some claim that Hendrix played rhythm for the group, while Tommy Chong claims that never happened. Either way, years later, after Jimmy had achieved success, he sat in on bass at one of Tommy's gigs. According to Tommy Chong, you could write an entire book on the debaucherous after party they had later that night. The impact of a great guitar teacher cannot be denied, and one could not hope for a better mentor than Joe Bonamassa had at a young age. Joe had become relatively known as a child prodigy by playing the blues festival circuit. Eventually, he crossed paths with the great Danny Gatton. Let me take a second to tell you about Danny Gatton. He was one of the finest Telecaster players to have ever lived. His nicknames, the Humbler, the Telemaster, the world's greatest unknown guitar player, are well deserved. Young Joe and Danny kicked off a friendship that would last until Gatton's passing. We would all be so lucky to have that caliber of musician showing us the ropes. A life in music can be exhausting and it's important to have an outlet. Some rock stars buy fancy cars, some drink and do drugs, some join weird religions. Steve Vai's hobby? Bees. This odd hobby started when he lived in Hollywood adjacent to an amateur beekeeper. Because of this, he noticed that his wife's garden was especially well fertilized. When he eventually moved, he decided to get himself a swarm and has kept busy with them ever since, having as many as 100,000 bees at any given time. Our final fact is about Omar Rodriguez of Mars Volta fame, one of the few reluctant guitar heroes. He's been quoted as saying, I've been angry since the beginning because I've always felt like I just got stuck with the guitar. Guitar. It was the only instrument where I could relate my ideas to other musicians, so I've always tried in one way or another to wrestle it, destroy it, make it really ugly by adding effects, or just trying to make it sound like anything besides this thing I hate the guitar. However, in recent years, it appears Omar has warmed up to his instrument. He's been on record saying the two are getting along better. Sorry, Dr. Phil, we don't need you on this one. And there you have it, seven fun facts about famous guitarists. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you've got a tidbit about another famous guitarist, please feel free to share it in the comment section. Thank you all so much for watching and a special thank you to all those who support this channel through Patreon. I offer a number of unique rewards to my patrons. Please consider going and checking out my page. New videos Mondays and Fridays, live streams on Wednesdays, if you're new here, please make sure you hit that subscribe button and stay tuned. I'm Samurai Guitarist, and I will see you again soon.